Welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security nerd, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting February 23rd, 2015. Let's go ahead and play back this week's stories. For today's story, I'm going to do something different and just recommend you check out Edward Snowden's Reddit AMA. If you haven't heard of Reddit, it's a popular social sharing network, and AMA stands for Ask Me Anything. It's where interesting people come to answer questions from the Reddit community. And today, Edward Snowden, Laura Poitras, and Glenn Greenwald joined to answer the Reddit community's questions. And this is probably because yesterday, Citizen Four won the Oscar for the Best Documentary Film. And this, of course, is Laura Poitras' film on the whole Edward Snowden disclosure, which covers a lot of interesting information. By the way, this film will be available on HBO tonight, so if you haven't seen it, you might want to check it out. In any case, I recommend you check out this Ask Me Anything. Uh, Edward Snowden covers a lot of questions from what he regrets he didn't do to how citizens can affect change in the 2016 election and many other interesting questions that have to do with our freedom, with democracy, and with internet-based privacy. So I really recommend you check out the Reddit AMA. Today's story is about the power off hijack Android malware. And this is actually a story from last week, but it kind of got buried in what I thought were more important security stories. And on top of that, I didn't think this was quite a big deal as the media might lead some people to believe. So what is power off hijack? Well, it's a piece of Android malware discovered by one of our partners, AVG. But its claim to fame is the fact that if you try to turn off an infected device, it will play an animation that makes it seem like it's turning off, but meanwhile your phone is still on and still able to spy on you. So this sounds like a big deal and a lot of media organizations made it seem like, oh, scary malware that can spy on you when your phone is off. However, there was a great article from Jack Wallen on the Tech Republic this week that talked about why this may not be as big a deal to many Android users. There's some caveats to this malware. First of all, you can only get infected if you download programs from third-party Chinese websites. Google Play does not spread this malware, so if your phone only downloads from Google Play, you're probably fine. But even more importantly, this malware needs root privileges in order to execute on your phone. Without going into all the detail, most carriers ship their phone to you without you having root privileges. You actually have to do these root exploits to gain more privilege on your phone or to root your phone in order for this malware to work. So on most users' phone, this malware wouldn't even work at all. That said, this is still malware and it has infected 10,000 victims. And it still is interesting seeing techniques like this tricky power off situation. But what can we learn from this even if it doesn't affect us? First, Android devices need anti-malware. There's many solutions out there. Many of them are free. Go get them. On top of that, if you use network security controls, they can sometimes even protect mobile devices. For instance, our APT blocker can detect malicious APK files. Today's story is going to be updates on both the NSA SIM heist and the Anthem breach. Let's start with the Anthem breach. This is the big healthcare breach that recently happened. Well, this week, Anthem warned that anywhere between 8.8 .8 to 18 million customers from Blue Cross or Blue Shield may also be affected. Long story short, Anthem and Blue Shield have this sort of partnership. So if you're a Blue Cross or Blue Shield customer, your data may have been stolen too. You should look into to that and get some credit monitoring. Second is some updates to the NSA SIM card heist. This of course is where leaked documents from the GCHQ and NSA show that they may have breached Gemalto, a private SIM card vendor, and stole the keys associated with mobile SIM cards. Now first of all, the impact of this breach might have grown. Uh, there's been some stories on how besides KI keys, that's the key your phone uses to encrypt communications between it and the cell phone tower, uh, these actors may have also stolen OTA keys or over-the-air keys. There's another encryption key that's used by uh, carriers to force software downloads onto mobile devices using SMS. And if nation states have those keys, they can presumably force uh, software on certain mobile devices, which could be bad. 
Now, meanwhile, the other update to this story is Jamalto, the affected private organization, had a press release on Wednesday. They started their investigation, and they admit that between 2010 and 2011, they found evidence of a breach. However, they also say that it was only a breach of their office network, and they don't think anyone was able to get any sort of SIM card keys. So according to them, the SIM card keys are not leaked. And this kind of shows you the problem with this sort of story. We don't have any clear evidence one way or the other. The people that are claiming the NSA have hijacked a bunch of SIM encryption keys, they're going off PowerPoint presentations that have leaked from the government. Meanwhile, we're not sure Jamalto's right either. You know, they may not have the tools to identify how big this breach was, so there's not any clear evidence one way or the other. And the moral of the story is I would reserve judgment until we have more clear evidence. In either case, these updates are pretty interesting to me, so I thought I'd share them. Today's story is about net neutrality when the day. In a nutshell, if you haven't heard about net neutrality, it's basically the fight to keep the internet equal and open. More specifically, it prevents ISPs from prioritizing certain legal traffic. They can't charge you more to get to certain sites, or they can't throttle or bandwidth control your access to sites that they may not like. Uh, in any case, today the FCC passed new rules that basically enforce net neutrality. Now, this doesn't have anything directly to do with information security, but there could be information security ramifications. In fact, some of net neutrality's naysayers warn that this limits ISP's capability to block bad traffic too. I don't believe that's the case. In fact, FCC points out this just applies to lawful or legal traffic. So uh, things like attacks, things that are clearly illegal can still be blocked. But that said, it does leave some gray area. Say traffic like BitTorrent. There's nothing illegal about BitTorrent many uh, legal and legitimate companies can use it to pass files. However, over 90% of BitTorrent traffic is probably illegitimate, you know, pirated applications, often malware infested applications. So lots of ISPs kind of throttle BitTorrent traffic or outright block it. However, with net neutrality, you can't do this because people should have legal access to BitTorrent too. In any case, I do think this is a win for the internet as a whole and for countries out there that uh, have their own country doing filtering, I do think all countries should have some sort of net neutrality rules. On top of that, don't think this is the end of the fight. I'm sure cable companies and ISPs and carriers will appeal this decision. Today's story is a phishing campaign that's popping Brazilian routers. The story comes from research from Proofpoint in an article by Brian Krebs. Basically, Proofpoint's found a four-week uh, phishing campaign where bad guys sent targeted emails to the customers of Brazil's large just ISP. These emails appear to be billing problems saying that you need to pay your bill, but they contain a malicious link. And this link exploits a cross-site scripting flaw in two of the popular routers this ISP uses. A cross-site scripting flaw is basically if a bad guy can get you to click a malicious link, he can gain your privilege to that particular web resource, potentially doing anything you could do with that web resource. And since this particular link contained the default passwords of these two well-known routers, if if you click this link, the bad guy can secretly change configuration of your router. And these particular bad guys used it to change the DNS settings of your router, basically so they could man in the middle attack specific websites that you might visit. Anyways, this is kind of an interesting new attack angle because it requires no malware. There's really nothing but this malicious email for you to detect. So what can you do to stop this? First, use email security solutions that can catch this sort of spam and can detect malicious links. Second of all, always change your default passwords. Clicking this link only works if your router is using a default password. So if you've changed that particular default password, you're fine. Now granted, this is a Brazilian story. We haven't seen this attack against any worldwide customers yet, but it's likely to happen in the future. Well, that's it for today, folks. I hope you found it interesting. As always, lots of stories, so be sure to check out the reference section in the blog post associated with this video, which is found on blog.watchguard.com or watchguardsecuritycenter.com, whichever you prefer. You can also find me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept, or you can follow my company, WatchGuard, at WatchGuardTech. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want the videos immediately. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank <laughs> you.